Kitchen Toxins by Chantal McCrimmon, Debbie Engel, and Diana Robles. A toxin is an absorbed or ingested poisonous substance that originates from within living cells or organisms. When these toxic substances contact or become absorbed by body tissues, they begin to interact and cause harm to parts of the body. Toxins vary greatly in the severity of their effect and can range from minor symptoms to life-threatening disorders. Today, we are going to take a look at substances found in our kitchen that are potentially toxic to our pets. These include chocolate, xylazole, grapes, raisins, and currants, caffeine, fatty scraps, onions, garlic, and chives, macadamia nuts, unbaked yeast, alcohol, and table salt. Chocolate can be found as a simple chewable or within products like flavored multivitamins, baked goods, and weight loss supplements. Chocolate is poisonous to both cats and dogs because it contains two central nervous system stimulants known as theobromine and caffeine. Both dogs and cats metabolize these agents much more slowly than compared to humans, thus allowing these agents to build up to toxic levels within their systems. The toxicity of chocolate is dependent on the type and the amount of chocolate consumed as well as the weight of your pet. By observing this chart, you will see that the different types of chocolate contain various amounts of theobromine and caffeine. A general rule of thumb to follow is that the darker the chocolate, the larger amount of theobromine and caffeine it contains. For example, let's say a 50 pound dog consumes 3 ounces of chocolate. By observing the chart below, you will see that the toxicity for this ingested amount varies for each different type of chocolate with milk chocolate producing a mild toxicity and unsweetened cocoa powder producing a severe or even life-threatening toxicity. Now let's say that a 14-pound dog consumes the same amount of chocolate as the 50-pound dog. Notice how the toxicity for this dog has drastically increased regardless of the type of chocolate that was consumed. Therefore, the weight of the dog is equally as important as the type of chocolate that was consumed. Signs of chocolate toxicity include hyperactivity, vomiting, diarrhea, and an elevated heart rate. More severe toxicities can result in seizures, collapse, and even death. If you believe your pet has consumed chocolate, it is important that you contact your veterinarian immediately for life-saving recommendations. Depending upon your pet's symptoms and the time of consumption, your pet may be induced to vomit by your veterinarian. Other provided treatments may include activated charcoal, heart and gastrointestinal medications, as well as fluids. Another commonly consumed toxin is xylazole. Xylazole is a natural sugar-free alcohol that can be extracted from any woody, fibrous plant material. Small amounts can also be found in fruits and vegetables. Xylazole is mainly used as a sugar substitute which can be found in products such as chewing gum, breath mints, dental products, or sugar-free candies, jellos, or pudding snacks. Its popularity is due to it tasting just as sweet as table sugar, but only having a third of the calories. Xylazole is toxic to dogs and has unknown effects in cats. Like chocolate, the toxicity of xylazole is dose-dependent. Small ingestions can produce acute hypoglycemia or low blood sugar within 10 to 15 minutes. Larger ingestions may result in even greater effects such as liver necrosis or liver failure. Signs of toxicity include weakness, lethargy, jaundice, black tarry stool, coma, or even death. It is advisable to contact your veterinarian if you believe your pet has ingested a product that contains xylazole. Grapes, raisins, and currants are an even greater threat to the health of your pet. These fruits are toxic to both cats and dogs, but surprisingly, the toxic mechanism is unknown. There is some speculation that the bacteria or fungi that grow on these fruits may be to blame. Other possible mechanisms of toxicosis include pesticide contamination, a nephrotoxic component within these fruits, or possibly the high concentration of vitamin D that these fruits contain. It is important to know that the toxicity of these fruits is not dose-dependent. 
all cases of indigestion, whether they be small or large amounts, could have the potential to cause acute renal toxicosis. Signs of toxicity include vomiting, diarrhea, abnormal drinking or urination, lethargy, inappetence, or even death. Immediately contact your veterinarian if you believe your pet has ingested any amount of these fruits. Your veterinarian may induce vomiting, decontaminate your pet with activated charcoal, or provide progressive supportive care as well as monitor your pet's kidney functions. Owners may not willingly give their pets caffeine, but all it takes is one bored dog or curious cat, some smelly trash, and if they partake, they could ingest the morning's coffee grounds or tea bags and voila, hyper dog or cat is born. Caffeine is in many products you may not realize, such as colas, energy drinks, diet pills, weightlifting supplements, chocolate, or even that no-dose taken to get you through the midterm cram session. Signs show that possible damage can be done to the heart and nervous system with an unpleasant outcome. Caffeine also has a diuretic effect on the body, so pets may pass large volumes of urine, becoming unusually thirsty, which perpetuates the cycle. More water, more urine, and so on. The first signs an owner may notice in their pet is the hyperactivity and restlessness. Then comes the vomiting, elevated heart rate, and hyperthermia. This can progress to hypertension, abnormal heart rate rhythms, tremors, seizures, and eventually collapse. If your pet has ingested caffeine, bringing them to your vet is sound advice. The vet will likely induce vomiting and give them activated charcoal to encourage elimination of any toxin remaining within the GI tract. We often find no harm in giving our pets fatty meat scraps, and we know how much they love it too. What we don't realize is that although dogs and cats might enjoy the flavor, what it does to them systemically can be downright dangerous. So give a second thought to sharing fast food, junk food, foods cooked in grease, bacon, butter, fried chicken, meat scraps, fatty meat drippings, and even gravies. The overindulgence of fatty foods can have a detrimental effect on the GI system. The initial signs are vomiting and diarrhea. Although they may show no signs for up to four days after ingestion, the damage has already been done. At this point, another sign to be aware of is abdominal pain. This pain can be due to these fatty foods activating overproduction of pancreatic enzymes within the pancreas. This leads to auto-ingestion of the pancreatic tissue causing inflammation or pancreatitis. If this is severe enough, it can lead to internal bleeding, chemical changes that affect their breathing, diabetes, kidney failure, and if left untreated, continuous pancreatitis can sometimes lead to cancer. Your vet will treat initial signs with antiemetic and antidiarrheal medicine. At the most severe, hospitalization with IV fluids will be in order. Some dog breeds that are typically more severely affected are miniature schnauzers, cocker spaniels, Yorkshire terriers, and Shetland sheepdogs. So, refrain from sharing those fatty foods with your pets because, if nothing else, this indulgence can lead to obesity, which has its own issues to deal with. One grouping of foods that are often overlooked as toxic are onions, garlic, and chives. After all, what pet willingly goes for an onion? What an owner may not realize is just how often those ingredients are mixed in with other foods that we consider harmless to our pets. Even casseroles with onion powder are a risk. And oddly enough, cooking or spoilage of the garlic or chives does not reduce their potential toxicity. Pets eating onions and or garlic greater than 0.5% of their body weight can be toxic. That's like a 30 pound dog ingesting two and a half ounces of onion or garlic. Onions, garlic, and chives are all part of the allium family, 
and are poisonous to both dogs and cats. Onions contain a toxic ingredient called thiosulfate. This toxin damages the red blood cells circulating throughout the body, causing them to burst and eventually leading to hemolytic anemia. This damage to the red blood cells prevents them from carrying oxygen, a major job of theirs, to the entire body. With this transport gone, the body has difficulty functioning. This toxicity can occur after several small ingestions as it is cumulative. Unfortunately, if enough is ingested, the possibility of liver damage is real. Some of the immediate signs will be the vomiting and diarrhea, which are so common with many other issues. So what else should you be looking for? Discolored urine, lethargy, yellow gums and whites of the eyes, this is icterus or jaundice, an elevated heart rate, increased respiratory rate, weakness, and exercise intolerance. Again, you may see delayed onset with the signs not showing for several days after the ingestion. Reactions are more prominent among cats, who are two to three times more susceptible than dogs. The treatment is to induce vomiting and give activated charcoal. If additional treatment is necessary, IV fluids, a blood transfusion, and supplemental oxygen are in order. This is because it can take up to two to three days for those damaged red blood cells to be removed from circulation and the animal may need the additional help until then. Macadamia nuts can be so tasty in cookies, chocolates, or by themselves, but can be toxic to your pets. The dose range that will show clinical signs is 2.2 to 2.4 grams per kilogram and will appear within 12 hours and can last up to 48 hours. Most common signs of macadamia nut toxicity are lethargy, high body temperatures, vomiting, and neurological symptoms, such as tremors, inability to walk, ataxia, and even high limb paresis. The mechanism of action of macadamia nuts is unknown, but your pet's prognosis is excellent and will be better within 48 hours. On a blood work, you can see an increase in serum triglycerides, serum alkaline phosphate, and segmented neutrophils on the white blood cell count. For treatment, your veterinarian will induce vomiting, give activated charcoal to help collect and excrete the toxin, give IV fluids, and monitor the pet for improvement. If the pet has eaten a lot of dark chocolate-covered nuts, it will also be treated for chocolate toxicity. Alcohol can be found in certain desserts, mixed drinks, and in unbaked dough containing yeast. Alcohol toxicity can be mild to severe. Signs will show drooling, vomiting, elevated heart rate, hypotension, low blood glucose, low body temperature, collapse, and even coma. Treatment at the emergency clinic will be to give IV fluids to dilute the alcohol and to get it out of the pet system. It will also help to increase blood pressure. They will also correct acid-based abnormalities. They will place the patient in a bear hugger and warm IV fluids to increase body temperatures. The technician will also be monitoring an ECG to check for any cardiac arrhythmia. Yeast is what converts the fermentable sugars present in the dough into carbon dioxide and ethanol. Unbaked yeast can be usually found in unbaked dough. Signs are moderate to severe and can be life-threatening. When a pet eats the unbaked dough, it will cause the yeast to ferment in the dark, moist, humid stomach. This will cause abdominal expansion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and drooling. It will also cause alcohol intoxication. As the stomach expands, there is a high chance that the pet will develop gastric dilatation and volvulus, or GDV, where the stomach bloats and twists in an abnormal position. This can cause elevated heart rate, weakness, hypothermia, collapse, coma, and even death. Treatment would be to induce vomiting, gastric lavage, giving cold water to the pet to try preventing or slowing down fermentation process. Surgical removal of the dough and surgery for the correction of GDV. 
Table salt toxicity can occur for many foods like Thanksgiving hams, instant soups, potato chips, and even from canned vegetables. The toxic dose is 4 grams per kilogram and is usually moderate to severe. Signs seen in table salt toxicity are vomiting, diarrhea, PUPD, lethargy, and neurological signs like depression, tremors, seizures, and coma. The veterinarian would treat by placing that patient on IV fluids, monitoring electrolytes, and supportive care. For more information, you can visit Pet Poison Helpline online, the ASPCA.org, that links to the Animal Poison Control Center or pet insurance for additional information on other toxins that can affect your pet. And in a case of an emergency, you can call your local veterinarian, your local emergency veterinary service, or the Pet Poison Helpline for a consultation with a fee. The number is 800-213-6680.